Hey guys, Lunch Money Comics here. Today I'm in the largest flea market in the smallest state. I'm at Plainfield Pike Flea Market in Rhode Island. I've never been here before. Let's go find some comic books. All right, guys, I found some pretty great comic books and got some really great deals. Let's head home and I'll show you what I got. Correction, I'm not heading home just yet. I have a little bit more time this morning to hit another flea market on the way home. So I'm heading back to Grafton, Massachusetts to check out that flea market again. Hopefully I have better luck. See you there. I'm just gonna throw it out there right now. If you like this sort of stuff, go down, hit that like button, consider subscribing. Uh, it would be a great way to support the channel and I would really appreciate it. Let's go find some comic books.
All right, guys, just as I was about to give up, literally the last table in the entire flea market that I looked at, there were two boxes of comics. One had mostly, you know, modern stuff, stuff from the 90s, and the other one was all silver and gold age. I got eight books. They're not in great condition, but I got them for five bucks a piece. Can't wait to go home and show you guys these ones. So there you go, guys. That was me hunting for comic books at two different flea markets in two different states. Um, I've said it before, I live in central Massachusetts, and I'm within an hour or two drive of all six New England states plus upstate New York. So it's really just a matter of me, you know, searching for flea markets in New England, and there are a ton of them. And I could basically plan on being at any of them on an early weekend morning. So um, when I woke up that morning, I did not expect to be going to more than one flea market, but it worked out for me. So that first one that I went to was the Plainfield Pike Flea Market in Johnston, Rhode Island. It builds itself as the largest outdoor flea market in Rhode Island. But it happened to be like this day I was there was like the first really cold day of fall and there was a pretty good frost on the ground. So I think it kept both like buyers and sellers away because, you know, there's a huge area of grass to have a big flea market, but there just wasn't that many people there. I'd be curious to go back in the summer and see if it really like owns up to this billing as the largest flea market in the smallest state. So because the flea market wasn't that big, I was able to cover pretty much the whole thing in like 45 minutes or so. You know, and there were comic books sprinkled here and there. You know, I think there was a box that I didn't even show you what was in some of these boxes. There just wasn't anything worth showing to you guys. There were a couple of destroyed ones, like, tossed in, you know, boxes. But there was one vendor who had a whole bunch of toys and a couple of boxes of comic books. Almost all the comics were uh, modern comics, no huge keys or grails or anything like that. But they were two bucks each. So I got myself a little stack of comics that I wanted for my collection and that I thought were worth talking about. So first up, we have Ghost Rider number 27. This is from 1992. And the reason I got this one is because it has a cover by Jim Lee featuring Jim Lee's X-Men. And there's no doubt when you look at the cover, that's exactly what, who those are. So I love the X-Men. I love the Jim Lee X-Men from the early 90s. Ghost Rider is pretty cool. Thought this was a comic book worth having. Next up, we have Captain America 363. This one's from 1989. I got this one because it's a very early um, cover appearance by Crossbones. Crossbones had a whole bunch of like uh, cameo appearances like leading up to this. I think number 360 is considered his first appearance, like the one that's worth the most money. I have the one before this, 362, which is considered his first full appearance and cover appearance, although it's not worth as much, I guess, as that second cameo. But this is the very next issue as a really great, you know, cover of Crossbones attacking Captain America. Thought it was pretty cool. I have most of this run back here in a box, so... I didn't have this one, we'll add it to the run. Next up, we have She-Hulk number eight. This one is from 2004, has a really cool cover by Mike Mayhew. I feel like even though this is 2004, this is kind of a semi-iconic cover. We have Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk right in the middle. We got Matt Murdock right here. We have Howard the Duck. I'm not sure who this is. I think it's like Captain Ultra or something like that. 
I don't know. I'll edit it out if I'm wrong. But um, yeah, I mean, anyone who saw the She-Hulk show on Disney Plus, I mean, some people hated it, some people loved it. Um, you know, this is this is it. This is She-Hulk when I think of her, you know, basically shenanigans in her law firm. So pretty cool uh, cover right here. Happy to have it. Okay, this is for the DC fans out there. This is Superboy 100. This is actually uh, number 100 of the fourth volume of Superboy. It's from 2002. The reason I got this one is for two reasons. One, it's the final issue of this volume, the series. And also, it has a cover by Bill Sienkiewicz. I love Bill Sienkiewicz. I love his painted style. Although, I think Superboy kind of looks dopey in this picture. Um, I thought it was a cool comic book to have, and I nabbed it. Okay, there were some, like, minor keys mixed into these boxes. Comics worth having. Um, this is one of them. This is the New Avengers number one. This is also from 2004. You know, this kicked off a whole new series, a whole new iteration of the Avengers team. You know, and this team carried through, like, all those big, you know, crossover events in the early 2000s, from, you know, House of M to Civil War, and uh, it led into Secret Invasion. So, not only is this the number one of, of a series and a new iteration on the team, but there's also sort of a deep dive first appearance here. Um, you can see right here the Jessica Drew uh, Spider-Woman. Well, Brian Michael Bendis wrote this uh, this series, and he wrote, you know, for years, and it was always the intention that, you know, this Spider-Woman was actually a traitor. For years, there's like, you know, there's a traitor amongst their mists. They weren't sure who it was. It was revealed four years later um, in number 40 that uh, Spider-Woman is actually the Skrull Queen Varanki in disguise and that leads into secret invasion and you know she's the big bad of that whole crossover event so in theory um this when you see uh, jessica drew in this comic book this is the first time that she's being impersonated by queen varanki so therefore you can kind of say that it's her first appearance the reason i bring this up is that uh, everyone knows secret invasion is coming out on disney plus trailers look pretty cool it looks like it's gonna be a pretty serious deep dive into the uh the storyline but um the rumors are that amelia clark of game of thrones fame um no one knows who she's playing the rumor is that she is actually playing queen varanki so i'm curious i know it's kind of a deep dive but in theory the spider woman in here is actually the first appearance of queen varanki i'm going with it so probably the best comic book i found in rhode island is this one this is captain america number 11 this is the Winter Soldier Part 3 from 2005, um, written by Ed Brubaker, art by Steve Epting. And of course, this comic book here is notable because it is the backstory and origin of the Winter Soldier, formerly known as Bucky Barnes. So I think we take for granted, you know, anyone who watches like, you know, the modern movies um, who has seen, you know, Captain America, the Winter Soldier which I think is objectively one of the best superhero films of all time. Um, we take for granted that, like, oh, yeah, it's the Winter Soldier. He's been around for a bit. That's not true. He's only been around since 2005. And as a matter of fact, I was reading a really cool article, an interview of Ed Brubaker, that when he was a kid, he felt so bad for Bucky, he wanted to bring Bucky back. But he said for decades, you know, Marvel always said there were two characters they would never bring back, Uncle Ben and Bucky Barnes. But uh, after Mar Marvel had bankruptcy and they were trying to, like, you know, shake things up in the early 2000s, you know, and he worked for them. He, he pitched this idea of bringing Bucky back, but making it a bigger tragedy for Steve Rogers. You know, it was already, you know, losing Bucky, his sidekick, was his biggest, like, failure, his biggest tragedy. Well, how can we make it bigger? Well, we'll make him a Soviet super assassin who, you know, was an agent for all the 20th century. Really, really cool take on the character. And, uh, you know, this book here tells his whole backstory. And anyone who's seen, you know, uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier, or a Civil War, you know, that whole story that you see of the Winter Soldier, it's in this book. This is the book it comes from. Listen, guys, when I pick these flea markets, a lot of times, you know, like if I do a whole bunch in a weekend, I kind of like come home and I put the stack of comic books and I don't always film this footage right away. That's the case here with, with th this, this pick. You know, I put these books here and it's actually been weeks since I've been able to actually film this. But when I came home, like right after I got home from both these flea markets, I put all the comic books down and I grabbed this one and I opened this one up and I read the whole thing. This comic book is awesome. Really, really enjoyed it. Really, really liked it. I recommend anyone who hasn't read this whole story to check it out. It's fantastic. So I was finished with the Rhode Island flea market so quickly and it was so early in the morning that I had time to do something else. So I checked my GPS and saw, hey, I can hit the Grafton flea market on my way home. I had been there one other time. I had sort of an infamous uh, comic book pick there. I found some good comic books in terrible condition, but uh, I decided to go back and check it out. There's always new vendors. You never know, guys. You know, it's, life is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Same is true with flea markets. So, uh, yeah, I went back, and I swear, um, I went to every single vendor in this flea market, and the very last one I went to, the last one I hadn't seen in the whole place, was the only guy with comic books. And he had two boxes of comics. One was, you know, all modern stuff. 
nothing I really wanted, but the other one was full of old, you know, gold and silver age comic books. And, um, you know, they had prices varying from like $5 up to like, you know, 70 bucks. So I started going through them and they were pretty beat up. And the vendor said, hey, you know, if you're interested, you know, don't worry about the prices, I'll give you a really good deal. I said, all right, sure. So I went through and I pulled out eight comic books and I showed him and he said, uh, how about five bucks each? Sure, five bucks for, you know, old Silver Age comic books, absolutely. Even if they're not, you know, big keys, I think that's worth having. Before I show you what I got, there was one comic book I passed on that I've been kicking myself ever since. It was a uh, old true crime comic book from the 1950s. It was uh, bordering on that, you know, pre-code uh, comic age. I'll put a picture of the comic next to me. And, um, you know, the reason I didn't get it was, you know, when I t went to take it out of the, uh, you know, the plastic, the, the front cover was like almost completely detached. It was pretty beat up. So I passed on it. However, in retrospect for five bucks, I think it's a comic book I would have liked to have, but whatever. Yeah, I can't let it bother me too much. I did get some really good stuff uh, besides that. So first up, we have Daredevil number 44. This one's from 1968, written by Stan Lee, uh, cover art by Gene Colan. Uh, I often talk about, you know, my favorite Marvel characters. I love the X-Men. I love Spider-Man. I don't often mention Daredevil. Daredevil is one of my favorite characters. And I have a pretty big uh, collection of Silver Age Daredevil. The reason is because I feel like of all the Silver Age big Marvel properties, like, you know, Fantastic Four, Avengers, you know, Spider-Man, Hulk, um, I feel like Daredevil for a long time was always like the most undervalued one. So I would always find affordable Silver Age Daredevil and I would snag it. So I love uh, Silver Age Daredevil and I was happy to pay $5 for this book. However, this had a slight flaw that I actually missed while I was there and did not notice I got home and went to rebag it. In retrospect, it's pretty obvious. I'm not the only one that liked this comic book. Evidently, a mouse did too. The entire corner's been chewed away. Guys, I don't know how I missed it. I really don't. Um, but that's okay because the inside of this book is beautiful. Um, you know, and I'm pretty excited to read this comic book. I mean, it's a reader uh, copy, absolutely. And um, I don't know. I The fact that I can actually read a Stan Lee uh, Daredevil comic book without any fear of damaging it any further, I'm going to get my $5 worth out of this comic book no matter what. So... Still happy to have gotten it, guys. Really cool comic book. Next up, we have Detective Comics 345. This one's from 1965. It's not a key. It's not worth that much money. But I thought it was cool. It has a really cool purple cover. It has Batman, you know, uh, taking his uh, cowl off, revealing Bruce Wayne underneath. Um, I just thought it was a pretty cool looking comic book to own. All right, now we're getting to some uh, better stuff here. Um, I also love Silver Age Fantastic Four. Who doesn't? Uh, these two comic books I got are not keys. But uh, they are cool nonetheless. So these are number 69 and 70. Both are from 1967. Both are written by Stan Lee with art by Jack Kirby. Um, $5 all day, guys. I would do this. Um, 69, uh, number 69 here is, you know, uh, in pretty good shape. Not awful. Um, this one's pretty beat up, number 70. We have a little bit of, uh, it looks like a rusting staple. The top corner is pretty beat up. But hey, you know, uh, early Fantastic Four guys, five bucks. Yeah, why not? Next up, we have three Thor comic books. We have... Number 167, this one is from 1969, uh, also um, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. This one's probably in the best shape of all the ones that I got. You know, um, you know, it's got some color breaks, but otherwise, you know, for a dark comic book, it's pretty cool. The other two I got are sort of like a part one and part two. They're number 180 and number 181. These are from 1970. These are written by Stan Lee. Uh, in this case, the art is by Neil Adams on both of these. I thought these are really cool uh, looking comic books here. Um, again, you know, Silver Age Thor. Yeah, don't mind if I do for five bucks. So pretty cool. So the last comic book that I bought uh, is sort of a silly one. Um, truth be told, I actually picked out seven comic books. And then he said five bucks each. And I had my two twenties and I said, you know what? I'll just don't give me change. I'll pick out one more comic book. Obviously, in retrospect, I should have picked out that true crime one. Instead, I grabbed this stupid thing. Um, this is Melvin Monster from 1967. I grabbed this for two reasons. One, it was close to Halloween. I meant to talk about it in my Halloween special. I think it was, I did like a quick, you know, one second preview of it. Uh, the other reason was it was probably the cleanest book he had in that entire box. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just thought it was a fun thing to talk about. You know, I, I would have rather had the crime one, but my kids love this cover. Uh, my parents knew who Melvin was. I'd never heard of him before, but hey, whatever. It's a cool comic book to have, fun to show on the channel, and uh, it is what it is, guys. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Two different flea markets, two different states, two completely different eras of comic books. I got a pretty eclectic mix of both modern and Silver Age books. Uh, for the modern books, I got some really great pickups. I'm pretty happy with this one here, Origin of the Winter Soldier. I already got my money's worth by reading it. Really cool book. Happy to add it to the collection. As for the Silver Age books, guys, I mean, five bucks for old Silver Age. 
even in a you know not great condition, I'm very happy to spend that and add these to my collection. I'm even happy to add this silly thing. It's just a, it's a fun book. Uh, so I spent $50 total on all of these. So go down to the comments, guys. Let me know what you think of my purchases. You know, hit that like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't, all that jazz. You can also follow me on Instagram now under Lunch Money Comics IG. So check me out and follow me. And um, of course, in the meantime, guys, I hope you keep finding comic books in strange and unusual places. And thank you so much for watching.